Good morning. Good morning. Let's begin this service by singing hymn number 256. The words of this hymn were written by the discoverer and founder of Christian Science, Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain, low, sad, and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain and wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, illumined by faith and breathed in raptured song with love perfumed. Then his unveiled sweet mercies show life's burdens light. I kiss the cross and wait to know a world more bright. And o'er this troubled, angry sea, I see Christ walk and come to me and tenderly, divinely talk. Thus truth then grounds me on the rock upon life's shore, gainst which the winds and waves can shock, oh, nevermore. From tired joy and grief afar, and nearer thee, Father, where thine own children are, I love to be. My prayer some daily good to do to thine for thee, an offering pure of love, whereto God leadeth me. Hymn 256. strings of the mind there sweeps a strain low sad and sweet whose measures bind the part of pain and wake a white winged angel throng of thoughts illumed by faith and breathed in raptured song with love then his unveiled sweet mercy show life's burdens light. I kiss the cross and wake to know a world more bright. And o'er a troubled angry sea I see Christ walk and come to me and tenderly Thus truth then grounds me on the rock upon life's shore, against which the winds and waves can shock or oh, nevermore. From tired joy and grief afar and Some daily good to do to thine for thee, an offering pure of love where to God leadeth me. The scriptural selection is from First Peter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and by Lithia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, Though now, for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, 
whom, having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angel desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. Please join in a few moments of silent prayer, and then pray together the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth. God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but deliver us, us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Our second hymn this morning is number 319. Son of our life, thy quickening ray sheds on our path the glow of day. Blessed star of hope, thy softened light cheers the long watches of the night. Hymn 319. On behalf of the members of this church, welcome to our service. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. Please join us at 8 p.m. on Wednesdays for meetings in which members of the congregation share healings and experiences resulting from the application of Christian science. Our Wednesday meetings, as well as these Sunday services, are broadcast on Zoom and available on YouTube. Access information is posted on the bulletin board in the foyer. In our Sunday school, which also starts at 10 a.m., children and teenagers learn to apply the Bible and the writings of Mary Baker Eddy to their daily challenges. In our reading room, you may study, borrow, or purchase the Bible, the Christian Science textbook, and other Christian Science literature, including the Christian Science Monitor, an international weekly news magazine, and daily online service. The reading room is open after every Sunday service and before each Wednesday evening meeting or by appointment, any time convenient for you. You're always welcome to join us at our services, to use the reading room, and to bring children to the Sunday school. We also invite you to visit our website, our YouTube recordings, or our Facebook page. Access information is posted on the bulletin board in the foyer or just enter Third Church Miami in your web browser. A light as shows a feast, 
such a feast as men's in length, such a strength as makes his guest. joy as none can move such a love as none can part such a heart as joy Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural text and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborate and explain the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. The lesson for today begins at page 20 of the Christian Science Quarterly. The Golden Text and the responsive reading are both from the contemporary English version of the Bible. Subject, Truth. Golden Text is from John. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The responsive reading is also from John. After Jesus had finished speaking to his disciples, he looked up toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come for you to bring glory to your Son in order that he may bring glory to you. When Jesus had finished praying, he and his disciples crossed the Kidron Valley and went into a garden. The Roman officer and his men, together with the temple police, arrested Jesus and tied him up. The high priest questioned Jesus about his followers and his teaching. But Jesus told him, I have spoken freely in front of everyone, and I have always taught in our synagogues and in the temple while all our people come together. I have not said anything in secret. It was early in the morning when Jesus was taken from Caiaphas to the building where the Roman governor stayed. <clears throat> Pilate came out and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? They answered, He is a criminal. That's why we brought him to you. Pilate then went back inside. He called Jesus over and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, My kingdom doesn't belong to this world. I was born into this world to tell about the truth, and everyone who belongs to the truth knows my voice. Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? The following citations comprise our sermon. The Bible, Deuteronomy. I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God, he is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Psalms. God, be merciful unto us and bless us, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? 
who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly, and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. As was announced in the explanatory note, I will now read Corel to passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Truth, independent of doctrines and time-honored systems, knocks at the portal of humanity. The question, what is truth, is answered by demonstration, by healing both disease and sin. And this demonstration shows that Christian healing confers the most health and makes the best men. Mortals try to believe without understanding truth, yet God is truth. We must reverse our feeble flutterings, our efforts to find life and truth in matter, and rise above the testimony of the material senses, above the mortal, to the immortal idea of God. These clearer, higher views inspire the godlike man to reach the absolute center and circumference of his being. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence. Truth in truthfulness. God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Psalms. Blessed art thou, O Lord. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. First Kings and Second Chronicles. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye? that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up. For the Lord shall deliver it into thine, the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. Continuing. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, 
or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said to him, How many times have I adjured thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah, and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and with water of affliction, until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me? So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said unto Jeho Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. And about the time of the sun going down, he died. Psalms, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. I have walked in thy truth. Truth, God, is not the father of error. Honesty is spiritual power. Dishonesty is human weakness, which forfeits divine help. You uncover sin not in order to injure, but in order to bless a corporeal man, and a right motive has its reward. You may know when first truth leads by the fewness and faithfulness faithfulness of its followers. Thus it is that the march of time bears onward freedom's banner. The trials encountered by prophet, disciple, and apostle, of whom the world was not worthy, await in some form every pioneer of truth. There is too much animal courage in society and not sufficient moral courage. Christians must take up arms against error at home and abroad. They must grapple with sin in themselves and in others and continue this warfare until they have finished their course. If they keep the faith, they will have the crown of rejoicing. Christian experiences teaches faith in the right and disbelief in the wrong. It bids us work the more earnestly in times of persecution because then our labor is more needed. If you venture upon the quiet surface of error and are in sympathy with error, what is there to disturb the waters? What is there to strip off error's disguise? If you launch your bark upon the ever agitated but healthful waters of truth, you will encounter storms. Your good will be evil spoken of. This is the cross. Take it up and bear it, for through it you win and wear the crown. Pilgrim on earth, thy home is heaven. Stranger, thou art the guest of God. Second John. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments.
throughout all generations, both before and after the Christian era, the Christ as a spiritual idea, the reflection of God, has come with some measure of power and grace to all prepared to receive Christ's truth. Grace and truth are potent beyond all other means and methods. Psalms. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. For the Lord is our defense. Psalms. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. Matthew. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. Christ, truth, was demonstrated through Jesus to prove the power of spirit over the flesh to show that truth is made manifest by its effects upon the human mind and body, healing sickness, and destroying sin. Speak the truth to every form of error. Tumors, ulcers, tubercles, inflammation, pain, deformed joints are waking dream shadows, dark images of mortal thought which flee before the light of truth. I here present to my readers an allegory, illustrative of the law of divine mind and of the supposed laws of matter and hygiene, an allegory in which the plea of Christian science heals the sick. Suppose a mental case to be on trial, as cases are tried in court. A man is charged with having committed liver complaint. The patient feel, feels ill, ruminates, and the trial commences. Mortal minds, materia medica, anatomy, physiology, hypnotism, envy, greed, and ingratitude constitute the jury. The courtroom is filled with interested spectators, and judge medicine is on the bench. The evidence for the prosecution being called for, a witness testifies thus. I represent health laws. I was present on certain nights when the prisoner or patient washed with a sick friend. Although I have the superintendence of human affairs, I was personally abused on those occasions. At last he committed liver complaint, which I consider criminal, inasmuch as this offense is deemed punishable with death. Therefore, I arrested mortal man in behalf of the state, namely the body, and cast him into prison. At the time of the arrest, the prisoner summoned physiology, materia medica, and hypnotism to prevent his punishment. The struggle on their part was long. Materia medica held out the longest, but at length all these assistants resigned to me, health laws, and I succeeded in getting mortal man into close confinement until I should release him. The case is given to the jury. A brief consultation ensues, and the jury returns a verdict of guilty of liver complaint in the first degree. Judge Medicine then proceeds to pronounce the solemn sentence of death upon the prisoner. Ah, but Christ's truth, the spirit of life and the friend of mortal man, can open wide those prison doors and set the captive free. Swift on the wings of divine love, there comes a dispatch. Delay the execution. The prisoner is not guilty. Consternation fills the prison yard. Some exclaim, it is contrary to law and justice. Others say, the law of Christ supersedes our laws. 
let us follow Christ. After much debate and opposition, permission is obtained for a trial in the court of spirit, where Christian science is allowed to appear as counsel for the unfortunate prisoner. The counsel's earnest, solemn eyes, kindling with hope and triumph, look upward. Then Christian science turns suddenly to the supreme tribunal and opens the argument for the defense. The prisoner at the bar has been unjustly sentenced. Prior to the night of his arrest, the prisoner summoned two professional friends, Materia Medica and Physiology, to prevent his committing liver complaint and thus save him from arrest. But they brought with them fear, the sheriff, to precipitate the result which they were called to prevent. It was fear who handcuffed mortal man and would now punish him. Man self-destroyed, the testimony of man are respected, Spirit not allowed a hearing, soul a criminal through rec though recommended to mercy, the helpless innocent body tortured, these are the terrible records of your court of error, and I ask the Supreme Court of Spirit reverse this decision. I appeal to the just and equitable decisions of divine spirit to restore to mortal man the rights of which he has been deprived. Here, the counsel for the defense closed, and the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, with benign and imposing presence, comprehending and defining all law and evidence, explained from his statute book, the Bible, that any so-called law which undertakes to punish aught but sin is null and void. The jury of spiritual senses agreed at once upon a verdict, and there resounded throughout the vast audience chamber the spirit of spirit, the cry, not guilty. Then the prisoner rose up, regenerated, strong, free. We noticed as he shook hands with his counsel, Christian Science, that all sallowness and debility had disappeared. His form was erect and commanding, his countenance beaming with health and happiness. Divine love had cast out fear. Mortal man no longer sick and in prison walked forth, his feet beautiful upon the mountains, as one that bringeth good tidings. Psalms. Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Matthew. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, I'm sorry, <clears throat> that's the wrong one. Acts. And there sat <clears throat> and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked, and when the people saw what <clears throat> Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius, which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye say these things? Why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Second John, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which ye have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Third John, 
I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. The question, what is truth, convulses the world. Many are ready to meet this inquiry with the assurance which comes of understanding. But more are blinded by their old illusions and try to give it pause. The efforts of error to answer this question by some ology are vain. Spiritual rationality and free thought accompany approaching science and cannot be put down. They will emancipate humanity and supplant unscientific means and so-called laws. Christianity is again demonstrating the life that is truth and the truth that is life by the apostolic work of casting out error and healing the sick. As there is in reality but one God, one mind, wrong notions about God must have originated in a false supposition, not in immortal truth, and they are fading out. Mind produces all action. If the action proceeds from truth, from immortal mind, there is harmony, but mortal mind is liable to any phase of belief. Whatever the belief is, if arguments are used to destroy it, the belief must be repudiated and the negation must extend to the supposed disease and to whatever decides its type and symptoms. Truth is affirmative and confers harmony. All metaphysical logic is inspired by this simple rule of truth which governs all reality. By the truthful arguments you employ, and especially by the spirit of truth and love which you entertain, you will heal the sick. Psalms. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. John, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The best sermon ever preached is truth, practiced and demonstrated by this destruction of sin, sickness, and death. In science, truth is divine, and the infinite God can have no unlikeness. Truth is always the victor. Truth makes man free.
Please join in singing hymn number 293. Rock of ages, truth divine, be thy strength forever mine. Let me rest secure on thee, safe above life's raging sea. Rock of ages, truth divine, be thy strength forever mine. Hymn 293. the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John, third chapter. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Grace be with you mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ in truth and love. Amen. 